With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum and welcome once again to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. I'm Fahima Mohammed, your relationship and couples coach. A very warm welcome from all of us here on British Muslim TV. I want to discuss another topic tonight, really important, that's going to help with your relationships. And if you have any comments or queries, you are most welcome to join in the conversation tonight if you want to call in live to the studio to speak to myself or my guest, you can do so by dialing 01924 231083. Please do ask the bill pays permission as standard network rates do apply. However, if you want to send any messages, you can do so for free on our WhatsApp service. And that number is 07585835150. And you can remain anonymous if you choose to do so. I'm also taking a lot of the messages, whether you're watching on Facebook or Twitter or live on Sky TV channel 752. I love having these conversations every week and I'm really blessed to have another inspirational guest tonight with, the, with us. And please do help me welcome her. She is Khadija Ma'arif. Salamu alaikum, Khadija. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima. Thanks for the invite for your show today. And I'm really pleased to meet you and the audience as well. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate your time. I'm really excited for what you have to say today. You're such an inspiration. You've done so much in such a short period of time, only being in the country for less than 10 years, and you've accomplished and achieved a lot. And I really want to acknowledge that. So thank you so much. Now, before we start um, the actual conversation, which is the importance of supporting, you know, um, you know, the support that you have in your relationship. And that can be coming from every angle, whether it's from your spouse, whether it's from outside influences, whether it's from family or friends. So it's a huge topic and we're going to go right into it. So, uh, but before we do so, tell us who is Khadija? What is it that you do? And tell us a little bit about, you know, your story. Sure. Yeah, uh, my name is Khadija Marif. I'm British Moroccan author of the book Muslim Women in Western Society, which is this book here that has been published last year. And I'm actually a certified coach in self-confidence as well as a motivational speaker. Like you rightly said in the beginning, I've been here uh, in the country less than seven years, actually. However, I felt it like it has been so long or longer than that. Uh, with the tons of things that I've done, uh, studying, working, coaching. It has been so uh, exciting and so, uh, you know, uh, I think that it has been more years than before, but it's really, I have a lot to give and more to come for the audience and for everyone. Mashallah, thank you so much for that introduction. I really love um, you know, how you've accomplished yourself in such a short space of time. And especially as women today, we do need to have, you know, role models to know that, you know, however long or short that your time is, wherever you are, you can definitely inspire and be passionate and make a difference. And that's what it's about. And I know that your line of work is for individuals with confidence and self-esteem, but a lot of the times, you know, that really does relate to our relationships and especially our spouse and uh, marriage sort of relationships, which is what we're going to concentrate on today. Now, when we talk about the importance of support, we always find, I don't want to keep it real in this you know, conversation, as I always do, and I'm not going to change it for tonight either. We always find that we get support from one side when it's a couple. And usually that support is the woman making the effort. I myself have a lot of uh, people that message and email in the actual show with their issues and their challenges. And a lot of the times it's the women complaining that they don't have support in their relationship from their spouse, from their husband. I mean, I'm sure that it works both ways, 
But majority of the time, statistically, it is the woman that wants to make the relationship work. It's the woman that wants to make an effort when things have sort of plateaued over the years. And they want to support that relationship. They want to support their husband. They want to build that relationship. What's your opinion about it being so one-sided? And why do you think that is? I totally agree with you and what you said about that women, they support more than men in a relationship. And this brings me to just give a, like a slight uh, description on what is a support in a relationship. Is normally uh, a supportive relationship is a relationship that brings mutual benefit to both parties, which means that uh, in helping them to quote both uh, in within the tough times as well as maximize good time. Uh, unfortunately, they don't in a relationship. Uh, men they don't take it in the they don't think about it in that side. They always expect it for women to do to think more, to give more, uh, to to bring more ideas, to be more creative, uh, which is wrong. And this normally devastates a woman energy and drain her, her energy. If she's that woman, if she doesn't have work, doesn't have kids, and she's just focusing, focusing on her husband and how can she, you know, uh, evolve this relationship? How can she make it a, a, a positive and healthy relationship? She will drain. Even she's, uh, she doesn't have anybody to, to look after except for her husband. She cannot cope with this for longer. That's why uh, today, inshallah, we will talk about the importance of a mutual support uh, or supportive relationship, which means the men can support and as well as the women, both them support each other so they can have a healthy relationship. That is so true. I'm glad that you've said that because we do find, especially in our Muslim cultures and traditions, that it's really up to the women to make the home. And yes, she does make the home, but she does need that support. And a lot of people feel that when you are married, then it's really only up to the wife to make sure that they're taking care of the children, the household duties, the fact that they are actually, um, you know, taking the responsibility of the entire family, even if they're living with in-laws or whoever is in that household, it is really solely up to them. And it doesn't even matter if she's working or not, she still has the same responsibility. And it doesn't take away from the fact that she's human. She needs someone to actually lend a hand. She needs someone to actually say, you know what, you can have a break, but it doesn't work that way. It's like as if she's meant to be a machine. And we are having lots of issues in our household today because we're not talking about equality. We're talking about someone really realizing there's another human that needs a little bit of assistance and you've got to analyze it case by case now if she's working if she's tired even if she's not working she's allowed a break she's allowed to rest in the house she's allowed to say well you know i'm going to have a day off and it doesn't happen so when you analyze that and when you said earlier that support should be where it is actually given for both parties, I think that's really important because it's like as if she's working herself for that relationship and even for that husband to maintain in that relationship, she has to be the one that has to actually carry the weight all on her own. Yeah. <laughs> Happening nowadays and that uh, it doesn't matter how she feels, it doesn't matter, uh, matter how tired she is, she's the responsible person uh, about her, if the marriage is successful, it's her. If the marriage is destroyed, it's her fault. We, and this is the problem, because there is no communication between spouses. There is no a sit down, a weekly sit down. If we, if we say they're both busy, they don't uh, both have time, but there is no weekly sit down talking about what hurt you. How do we need to improve ourselves? How we need to refresh this relationship? How we need to support each other? There is no direct communication. Or sometimes we expect from the other uh, other half to read what's in our mind, which is totally wrong. No, we need to speak up. We need to talk. We need to bring whatever inside outside. So and make it clear. This is what we need. This is how how. This is how I feel. This is how I can help. So, or this is how you can help. This is the good things this, to tell the spouse, to tell the other part uh, that this is how they can help you to 
feel better to give more to survive in a relationship in general absolutely absolutely i know that you've said that we need to communicate but i've also come across cases where when the women are communicating that the husband doesn't want to listen because they don't understand that this is how relationships have evolved and we have to say that yeah relationships have evolved in our muslim communities because women's roles have evolved over the time as well where they are actually contributing into the house whether it's financially or they're going out to work or they have got different responsibilities or they're speaking up that like they did it before about what are their rights what are their needs and there's a different dynamic do you think that it's not just the communication but the fact that our tradition and culture still still play a really really vital role in the home where even if we have these needs we're living in a western country we're not talking about it being equal we're talking about it being fair and just which is what is in our faith Okay, we're not feminist here trying to sort of say that, you know, we need to like, you know, push our agenda in a particular way. No, we're trying to do it in an Islamic context. What's your opinion about the cultures that do not accept that a woman actually does deserve a rest in her home, whether she's working or not? And it's not just completely up to her. And she does need support from her husband, especially. True. Yeah, totally agree with you. To be honest, like you said, sometimes communication is not uh, is not enough, or uh, even she she does speak up. The uh, you know the spouse that they don't understand, or they pretend sometimes they they don't understand. This is the way how we grow up, and unfortunately, we blame this as well in Islam. If we go back and we read the Sirah and how our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam treat his wives, uh, uh, especially if we're talking about uh, Sayyida Aisha, helping her, uh, joking with her, listen to her uh, when she's upset, the, the way he's soothing her, we can learn a lot, or men can, men can learn a lot from our uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But we don't implement this. We just blaming, oh, this is our culture. This is how we grow up. Yeah, we can blame that this is how we grow up or this is how you grow up within your family. This is how we I see love what it. you're saying so far, Khadija, but unfortunately we're coming into a break so quickly, but we are going to pick up from where we left off. Thank you sure. so much for actually listening so far, sending in your messages and comments on Facebook. I am going to go through them and hopefully, inshallah, if you have any questions, please send them through and I'll be reading them after the break. Make sure that you stay tuned. We have so much more to discuss. We've only just touched the surface and we're going to get much more deeper. But inshallah, we will see you in a few moments. Only if you stay tuned, keep watching. Make sure that you catch us at the other end. We'll see you shortly. Take care. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. We're having a really exciting topic tonight with my lovely guest, Khadija Marif. And we were talking before the break with regards to giving support to your partner. Now, in a relationship, in order to make it work, it takes two people. It takes a lot of effort, but it cannot just be from one side. Now, we've got a few messages coming in. And I want to read out the first one for you, Khadija. We have um, a lady that's messaged me saying, Salam Alaikum, as always, a lovely show. And um, her question is, has society taken away the element of humanness from the women? If yes, what should we do about it? I guess talking about how the expectation in a household of whether the whole weight is on the women to actually make that relationship do you think that um society has a part to play you know with that what's your thoughts yeah uh to be honest uh, society plays a role in this as well putting all the weights and the heavier responsibilities on the women uh only on the women that she needs to be successful in her marriage or before she she even got married when she's still a girl, we keep saying, you need to do this. You need to learn how to cook, to cook for your husband. You need to learn to do how to do the dishes so you can do, uh, when you go to your husband, you do the dishes properly. Everything 
uh, we teach our uh, girls that it's for their house, for their husband. We don't teach them how to be themselves, how to, you know, to learn, to be educated, to have a job first, in, to be strong, to, to study, how to be in a relationship when, whenever they got married. So, yes, in a, in a, in one part, I can blame the society that's putting the heavy weight in a woman to be successful, uh, and the blame as well. Whenever is there is a divorce, we're blaming the woman first before even we listen we listen to he, uh, to her or to her partner. However, from uh, in this era, we need as well as a women be responsible about ourselves, be responsible about our future, be mindful about our mental health. Because being in a relationship, it's not. Uh, we should know that we can. It's not a positive. It cannot be positive. There is always up and downs in life. So we need to be mindful how we can communicate, how we can uh, support ourselves before asking others for support. Uh, that's. It's nobody in the situation knows better than you. So before you got you got married and be excited to get married, you need to learn to understand other half, to ed uh, educate yourself more about marriage before you got married. I so love what that. Do you think? I love absolutely. I agree with you 100. percent And I love what you said. It's so powerful. And I'm going to go back into actually your book for a moment as well because you talk about the the Western Muslim women, which I think is really relevant to what we're speaking about today. And I don't think people understand that. And the question about you know society playing a part. I mean that word society. You now what kind of society are we looking at? Are we talking about the Muslim community? Are we talking about the Western society influence? I mean both part has a place. Some negative even from the Western side, or some you know positive. Part parts where we are actually standing up for ourselves so we've got to look at it much more deeper but before we do we have another question for you Khadija they're coming in really nicely right tonight um salam alaikum Fahima and Khadija as you say Fahima today is about inspiring relationships and the importance of support in a relationship we all want a good supportive partner inshallah someone who helps you in life my question for you today is how um, and what makes a good supportive guy um, for any lady? So how would you describe a supportive husband? That's a really good question. Thank you for sending that in, by the way. Oh, yeah, sure. That is a really good question. And uh, to be honest, when I have in my one-to-one -one coaching with other women as well, they they do ask this the same question because they have issues. They keep saying that I, I'm doing everything. So what about the other half, what they can do for me? So to be a supportive partner, the first thing I would suggest be, you know, a good listener. Good listener means you just don't judge. If I come to you saying, Fahima, I've done this and and I know myself that it's wrong, but don't just uh, start on me. You shouldn't do this. You need to think. You know, no. When I come to you, I'm talking to you. Just listen. Uh, feel that I have somebody that listen to me without judging me, without pointing finger on me. So the, good, be a good listener. It's really uh, important in a relationship. Then I love that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Second thing is show me consideration on your for your partner. So if I've done I've done my hair. You look beautiful today. A lot of women, unfortunately, they go do their nails. They spend hours in salon, do their nails, you know, for <laughs> pain, do their hairs. And their partner, they never notice. They're so busy, you know, with work. Or they come home tired, uh, phone as well. There is football match or something. But they just, don't, they, they don't notice. No, it's really good when you consider other a little effort from other person even cooking sometimes we criticizing oh too much salt or not enough salt come on it's not enough salt. you can just ask please can you give me so i can put more salt that's she make she be standing hours making your dinner and everything so you should consider that effort not just saying it's not there is not enough salt we go to a five star restaurant and we still have sometimes less salt or more salt so yes it should be considerate there is consideration there and another uh, the third point that i can say they taking time to laugh with your partner sometimes we just rush rushing communication uh, or talking about we don't have enough money to pay the bills kids they need this lot of we need we need we need but we 
don't enjoy time between us. Let's forget about the bills. Let's forget about the kids. Let's forget about outside world. We focus on ourselves and talk about something to laugh together. We can watch a film that we can laugh together. Just something that we can remember. Whenever you go to work, you remember sometimes you just need a, a positive or a nice moment that you can remember about your wife, give you more energy and more uh, motivation so you can carry, out, carry on with your day. Uh, what else? Be helpful. Of course, this is uh, eminent within a relationship. So if you see your wife struggling with the kids, it's it's just not it's not uh they're, uh, they're uh, her own kids only it's your kids as well so you can take them to bed you can shower them you can help them with their homework it's not her job to do everything she's a wife she's a mom but she's still a woman she needs time for herself she needs time for her to rest she needs time just to have a bath in peace 30 minutes in peace but sometimes they're not allowed everything can a woman know Please be, uh, you know, be helpful to your wives, be helpful to your partners. Uh, minima minimal things can make difference in a relationship. This is what people, they don't understand. Very, very interesting points. Extremely powerful. I loved everything you said, but I want to be fair on the show. I do understand there's a lot of men that give support as well. And there are also a, a certain amount of women that don't support their husbands. And it's constant demands. We also get messages here on the show and emails that come to me directly with challenges that men have with women who are not supporting their husbands. And there's maybe a high expectation or there's never any fulfillment and satisfaction no matter how much the husband brings into the house and mm -hmm. I am real on the show and I'm gonna also be fair and just and it's not just one-sided even if the statistics are balanced more on where you know women have less support but I do realize that there's also a percentage of men that actually do bring the household in a way where they actually also need acknowledgement and and recognition. So what are some of the things that a woman can do to support their husband when their husband is playing part and they're not the ones that are being supportive? Totally agree with you because when I'm talking here I'm not just putting the blame on a man or, or, or a woman. It's part, uh, it's a relationship so both parties. Uh, probably we're talking about women the most because they uh, they speak up more probably or, or we receive a lot of emails or uh, text messages talking they try to talk about their issues and men because they're strong <laughs> they keep things to themselves however yes. you can uh, you are totally 100 percent right we have in a lot of men that they do win uh, more than what's normally a woman sh should do or a mom, a mother should do. They're looking after their kids. They're trying to be helpful to their uh, spouse and everything, but she's never satisfied. This is what, uh, what destroy a relationship. When the fulfillment is never attended, this is uh, the part where we can say the woman, she's the one destroying her household. Because she need to be, uh, she need to consider as well any gesture that her husband is doing, any help that her husband is providing. Uh, is if looking after her kids, she need to be grateful because he's giving her space to look after herself. If he brought something, any food home, she need to be thankful that he, you know, uh, he took that time that she's spending in the kitchen and giving it back to her to look after herself, herself to look after him as well, just sitting down both of them and chat and everything. So if from my side, I am asking women as well to be grateful, uh, whatever man is doing for them. Absolutely. No, that's very important that we did raise that because I don't want to bring it from one side. It is not fair in society to sort of talk at it from one angle and perspective because we see a whole spectrum of issues within a relationship and it's both sides that do have, um, you know, a part to play. So, um, you know, the expectation there that we have for our relationship, for our spouse, whether you're a female or a man, whether you're husband or wife, it has to be fair. It has to be just. And in Inshallah, you know, this is what we are here to do on the show is to discuss 
discuss these kinds of topics only to help your relationship to thrive and for you to actually, you know, be in that relationship fulfilled and successful. Now, we have more uh, questions coming, but I'm going to read them after the break, which we are coming up towards shortly. I just want to remind the viewers, I want to thank you for your questions so far. Thank you for the interaction. Thank you for your messages on Facebook and Twitter. Really appreciate the fact that you support us continuously each week. The show is nothing without your viewership, without your support, without your queries and questions, and even your suggestions, which is what we are raising on the show each week. This is only for you. And we have amazing professional guests like Khadija tonight each week to share their perspective and their opinions. And inshallah, we will pick up more questions for Khadija in a few moments. And make sure you stay exactly where you are. I would love to see you in a few moments where we will be discussing more topics around the issue that we have tonight. We'll see you shortly. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. We're discussing the importance of support in relationships and we're looking at it from different angles, how the man can support their wife and vice versa. Now, we did discuss before the break with regards to how both parties can have different expectations and not be grateful and how that can really disrupt the relationship. Khadija, you've written a book, and I think it's really relevant to discuss that tonight as well, because I think we have different issues when we are living in the West compared to when we are back home, you know, in different uh, backgrounds. And we try to carry that culture into the West and sometimes that transition isn't necessarily smooth or even applicable. What's your thoughts and experience about that, as, as well as including what was in your book? Sure. To be honest, uh, my book, Muslim Women in Western Society, is divided in two parts. The, the first part where I was talking about my own experience, uh, especially uh, when I moved from Morocco to UK, it wasn't an easy uh, transition for me. As we, uh, as we all know, when uh, you grow up in your back home, for example, any uh, Muslim country, you got your family beside you, uh, you got support from friends, moms and dads, brothers, sisters, anybody, you know. However, when you move to a Western society, it's totally new, it's totally different culture, uh, different people as well, because uh, as we know here in UK, uh, mashallah, there is uh, different uh, background, people from different background. It's not just British, but we have in from French, Italian, Romanian. So it's diversity, it's culture, the cultural diversity in this country. When I came here, I was really happy, full of uh, motivation to start a new life and join my husband, of course, here. However, uh, when I start seeing or noticing that uh, people, not everyone accept you, and if you find challenges at workplace, you, you find challenges when you go outside shopping, you go to a coffee shop, it starts hurting me directly. It starts impacting my self-confidence. That's why I studied self-confidence to become certified coach on it. So, uh, I, but before that, I was crying every day. Uh, I, you know, not like going to your family and talk to them and explain to them what happened. They won't understand it because they don't live in the in UK to understand what I'm talking about. However, I found, alhamdulillah, a really supportive husband. He's the one that helped me to understand that uh, you are a Muslim woman and living here in UK, it won't be easy for you. It won't be easy for a non-Muslim to accept you, especially with hijab. However, you need to work on yourself 
especially uh, at workplace, because English was my fourth language. Speaking Arabic, French, and Berber, English is my fourth language. So I'm making efforts for people to understand me and for studying every day of myself, uh, working hard to prove that I can be as well better. Doesn't mean I'm wearing scarf or I'm Muslim. Uh, I won't fit within the job or I'm less than you. No, we're all the same. We're still all human. However, I'm uh, I'm here to prove myself that I can do better and I become better, alhamdulillah. But I couldn't reach this without my support uh, of my husband. If he wasn't here guiding me every day, listen to me, which is the important thing. Listen to me uh, and listen to my to how... You know the good things on a good husband when you came from work and ask you how was your day. So at least you know that somebody is interested to know what's, uh, how you spend your day and what is the good thing that you had and what is the bad thing that you experienced. So these things, he starts filtering. So you can, you can improve yourself on this. You can work on yourself on this. So he's guiding me because he's here before me more than 20 years. So he knows better that things that can help me to fit in within the society or to in integrate smoothly within the society, of course, without losing myself, without losing who I am, who I come from, and keeping up on my faith. So support his husband is very, very essential in any relationship and for any woman to be successful. I know that women can be successful with their own. However, when she's in a relationship and having a supportive, a supportive husband, she can be successful uh, quicker in that way so she can uh, if she uh, if we take her by her own six months she can be a, a three month four month with the support of uh, a husband and the second part of my book is more motivational and more inspirational to any woman uh, experiencing the same issues struggling to fit in within a new society especially uh, the women coming from abroad to live in a western society it can be uk it can be spain it can be france us any Western society, this book is very helpful, giving her uh, a step-by-step -step guide how can work on herself, how uh, as well as others, you know, can be colleagues at work, can be friends, can be husband, can be family, how they can support her to overcome her fears, to overcome her struggles and to be successful within her life. Wow, you've really, really blown me away. You are more than inspirational. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your personal story as well. I really am so grateful, even more so, to have you on the show tonight. I couldn't ask for a better guest for this particular topic. You are really not just inspiring, but you actually are like a role model. And on top of that, you are sharing your own experience to help other women. And, you know, inshallah, I only wish you for more success. And please do get that book. I want to now you know more so uh, we didn't have time beforehand but I need to have that book in my hand most definitely soon it seems absolutely interesting and I think you've raised some really really important points which I didn't even think of and that is so true when you do come because you do find people that are married and they bring um you know wives or husbands from a different country and there isn't the support that you know exists that you would have normally especially if you're leaving family and friends behind you're in a completely different society and you rely on your spouse so much and you know alhamdulillah you've you've had that support from your husband and you know i hope he's watching and you know inshallah he's also an inspiration to all the men out there that listening to you to realize what a difference it makes when you actually have a good intention a good heart and you want to bring your wife into your household to really take care. And it does pay off, not just for each other, but the fact that, you know, as you said, it filters. And what you're doing is absolutely beautiful. You are beautiful inside and out, Khadija. Thank you so much for sharing that story tonight. Really, really, really thrilled. Um, we do have another question for you, actually. It says... Um, do you like your name Khadija, alhamdulillah, after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wife? That's the first question. Also, as World Hijab Day was very recent, a question for the two of us as to what does hijab mean? And again, they're asking a dating related question as to what is a good way for a guy who is single to approach a lady in a respectful, supportive way to talk to her? Should he give her a compliment first or should he just say happy Valentine's Day to her? What's your thoughts? <laughs> yes, we are approaching that very soon. <laughs> well, let's talk, Thank uh, you for that question, by the way. There's three parts. We'll go through it slowly. <laughs> no. 
actually it's break <laughs> one by one. So uh, the first uh, part is uh, your name. Yeah, your name. To be honest, I'm really lucky that to be uh, named after our Prophet Sallallahu wives. And uh, my name is normally my grandma's name. So my dad's, uh, he got, he has six uh, boys and I was the only girl, the last one. So, <laughs> you know, that's, um, um, I'm, I'm the girl said, so that's it. She's Khadija. She's going to be named after my mom because his, uh, his mom that time was died. And in our culture, in Morocco culture, we said, if you don't have Khadija at home as a, as a wife or as a daughter or as a mom, you write it in a wall. <laughs> so this is the, the Moroccan culture. So a lot of people, they name it Khadija and it's well known in Morocco. The second thing is about the word Hijab Day. Uh, I was, of course, uh, one of the supportive of this uh, of the World Hijab Day, and I've been posting my Instagram as well. My hijab is my choice, and this is as well written within my book, telling people that, especially uh, people judging the book by its cover, means seeing me in hijab, they think that I cannot think like them. I cannot give 100% of my job. I cannot be a manager and leading people. They, they see hijab covering my uh, my hair, like covering my brain and covering my to my thoughts, which is totally wrong. I'm here to say, no, the, the hijab is my choice. Like you have, the, like anybody have the choice, waking up in the morning, uh, open their wardrobes, taking a suit, taking a skirt, taking a dress. I'll have the choice as well to take uh, my scarf and wearing it beautifully. But that's why I've said hijab is my choice. So I don't like people judging me by wearing my scarf, no. Judge me by my skills, judge me by my knowledge, and judge me by my, my experience, not by the way I'm dressing up. However, the third question I would love to hear from you, Fahima. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. And again, you always inspire me with your answers. It's always beautiful the way you answer it. Thank you so much for that and sharing your culture and the way in which things are actually done at home, back home with you. It's absolutely beautiful, just exactly as you are. Well, you know, hijab to me is exactly the same as you. It's my choice. It's empowering. It, it means so much more than just faith. It's actually, again, um, us having freedom to choose, you know, how we show up. And again, it doesn't mean that we, it takes away any of the skill, like you mentioned, it doesn't take away any of the opportunities as well. So inshallah, we are opening up more conversations about this and us being on a platform like this, dressed the way we are, speaking the way we are, hopefully does entice people. And we also need support, not just from other women, but also from men who stand up for women who are wearing hijab. So absolutely correct. Um, we are coming into a break and I will answer that third part of the question when we come back because I do want to give it time and attention. It is a beautiful question. Thank you so much for sending that through. I really, again, do appreciate everything that you are saying to us from viewing us, you know, as the audience watching on Facebook, Twitter, or live on Sky TV. If you want to call in, we're happy to hear you um, take your questions and any queries, myself or Khadija. We do have so much more to discuss. But to quickly say about dating, yes, it does depend on the scenario and the situation. And to approach someone respectfully, maybe is to get to know them behind the scenes and not just to sometimes approach face to face and maybe get a second or third party. I know it's difficult to get to know someone, but in this day and age, you have to be careful because not many women would actually appreciate being approached just, you know, first of on uh, you know, a one-to-one -one basis in that way. She might feel intimidated. She might not even take you serious. So find out about the person that you like and maybe go through a third party and maybe get your family involved and that could help. And if that doesn't answer your question, we'll come back to it again. And if you can message me, but we will be back after a short break and inshallah, we will be continuing with the conversation and I hope to see you exactly where you are. We'll see you in a few moments. Take care, salam. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live.
Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the final part of Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. I'm absolutely loving the conversation tonight, especially with my beautiful, inspiring guest, Khadija. Thank you so much for being with us today. And I'm really, really excited that, you know, we have each week beautiful guests and tonight is no different. I am enjoying the conversation so far. I'm loving the interaction from the viewers that we're getting and all the questions that I hope that I answered it. If not, I'll go through quickly what I mentioned where the the question was, how do I approach someone that I like as a young man? And you do need to be careful as a young man because a lot of young women are feeling vulnerable out there. And especially with courtship and Islamic sort of rules and rights, we need to obviously be careful. If you're even going to compliment someone, how is that going to come across? How is that going to even make a first impression on yourself to the other person? Because there are lots going on and we're living in a society where things are said, you know, haphazard. It was actually said maybe without meaning. So if you want to be serious about a relationship, you have to approach it differently. And I think sometimes the old fashioned way does work where you do get other people involved so that the, the sister knows that you're serious. And if there's no way of doing that, then approach it in a really respectful manner where you do speak to her saying that, you know, I'd love to get to know you. And is there a way that we could speak, you know, with maybe some, you know, um, a, another sort of person involved, whether it's a friend, a family member, so that they know that you're not just messing around? Because I think women are approached a lot today. And even if it's a serious uh, approach for getting to know them, because the way in which it's done is not done appropriately, then that can actually, you know, lose your chances. So um, inshallah, that answers your questions. And thank you again for answering, um, you know, and giving us completely, you know, more and more exciting things to talk about apart from what we have on the show today. So Khadija, when we were talking about support, okay, we spoke about the husband and the wife, we talk about, you know, coming new into the country and, and knowing what it's like to not have family and friends around. But when you do have in-laws as your support, you do have um, friendships. How much is that really an impact on the relationship? Say, for example, there's a lot of problems with in-laws not being supportive for the new daughter-in-law, especially in the household. And then they can create that rift. And, um, you know, it's really important that we understand this factor because, you know, when you're taking on a wife and when you are introducing your wife to that family, they become that member. They become not just a daughter-in-law, they become that daughter that they should see as their own. And maybe if they had that in mind, they would treat her differently. So what is your kind of advice and guidance for in-laws to support relationships so that it can actually thrive instead of creating rift and where, you know, for example, the husband might feel torn in between his mother and his wife. So how do you guide people when they're going through those kind of challenges? Uh, really a beautiful question, to be honest. Uh, normally, and unfortunately, in our culture, whenever we have a new, you know, uh, the man get, got married, have, have the wife at home, the relationship starts uh, between in-laws, the mother-in-law or sisters-in-law, is not a, uh, in a good way. Why? Because uh, as in-laws, we feel that we are the... Like we are the people that's the dominance, the alpha dominance, and uh, whoever came to our house, they need to follow our rules, they need to do this, they need to do that way, and whatever she's done or whatever she's doing is totally wrong. And this is the the things that uh, I don't tolerate, to be honest, because if we're having somebody coming to a new house from different culture, even from the same country, but it's from different households, so... The way I grew up in my house doesn't mean my friend from Morocco, she grew up the same way. So they got, uh, they have their own values, they are the, 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 their own rules, the way they cook is different from my way. That doesn't mean if uh, if she's done something in a different way, she's wrong and I'm right. No. And this part of tolerance we don't have with each other. So if I'm coming to a new household, they need to understand me. They need to know that uh, I'm growing up differently. Uh, I'm cooking differently. I'm dressing up sometimes di differently than, than them. Uh, and it's not wrong. They need to understand that this is my way. However, we need to come uh, across it in a, in a positive way. Uh, or we need to 
the way they need to come across to the new wife saying that's well listen uh, in in here we do this uh, we normally we cook in that way we dress it up in that way this is how we grow up if you want to as well uh, taking part of this family it will be good that you follow our traditions you follow this but without dismissing her cattle she grew up 20 years or 30 years with her mom and dad in a different way and within one night you want her to change it's impossible so we need to be tolerant with each other we need to uh, to be supportive to each other and if she doesn't get the support from her in-laws will be always trouble and the man will be always between his wife and his mother or uh, you know his sisters that is so important. And I think, you know, we don't talk about this enough. Um, as much as we love our brothers, our sons, and when they bring in a new wife, you know, it doesn't mean that it takes away that relationship. And I can get it from both sides. But to be cruel to a person that's left their home, expecting to have another home and have new sort of set of parents and sisters and brothers who are in-laws, to treat them with respect. And believe me, this is also your Islamic responsibility to do that. And you will be accountable if you don't do it in that way. So don't take this lightly, okay? It's really important how you treat people, even if you love your son so much. Much. If you're going to treat that daughter-in-law in a way that is not respectful and is not just and right, you will have a really detrimental impact in this life and afterwards. And that's why we have this show, because there's too many problems that are happening and we're not speaking about it. And you need to take heed of what's being done to somebody else, because you also have daughters and you they're also going to enter into another household and they are going to be treated and you're going to want that daughter of yours to be treated you know, in a respectful, loving, kind way. And that will start with you showing that respect to your own daughter-in-law. And don't put your own son in a way where he has to choose between the mother, the sister and his wife. You know, you can compromise, you can, you know, share differences, you can have different ways. It's so, so important. Now, yeah. how would the husband cope if there is sort of like um, not support, not likeness, where, you know, the mother's complaining about, oh, your wife's doing it this way. And even sometimes the wife is not even accommodating to the in-laws. How do you help the individual? Because, you know, in a way, then that husband actually is kind of like, you know, standing on eggshells and it doesn't know which way to turn because either way, there's no sort of assistance. How do you guide that? To be honest, it's really hard for the husband to go up and match with both sides, with the mother and the wife, because by the end, he's still a human being. So he got feelings. He cannot say no to his mother because it's his mother, of course, and he cannot as well let down his wife because it's his wife. So what um, I would like to say from, from here, that the mother and the wife, they need, they need, they need to really, uh, uh, the wife need to respect her mother-in-law and treat her like her mother. And the uh, mother-in-law need to treat her, uh, treat her uh, daughter-in-law like her daughter. Because by the end, what are we going to take from this life? Nothing. It's just the way, like in our Sarah and our Sunnah, is the way that we're treating others that count. So when you're going to meet Allah one day, what are you going to say? No, I, I, I've done this because I don't like her. Or the, you, you, you don't have anything to, to help yourself or to support yourself that ju on the judgment day. So please, please, you need to treat others the way that you want to be treated. And if we start acknowledging this statement, it will change a lot in our life. Absolutely, absolutely. And I just want to quickly touch on the fact, because we do have a lot of breakdown in relationships as well, where there's divorce. And do you think there should still be respect amongst the in-laws, the ex-in-laws? Because, you know, especially when there's children involved, they're still family, they're still cousins. But when one wants to treat someone else unfairly because there's a divorce, now, how do you even go around that? Should there still be sort of respect and support? Uh, or do you just completely cut ties completely? And, and how would you sort of like, you know, advise that? Uh, okay, a beautiful question as well. To be honest, I don't advise at all on cutting ties because even there is a divorce, you still need to respect other other half. Because one day you already uh, you, you shared a lot of things bet between you, and especially if you have kids, 
you need to be respectful to each other in front of your kids so you can give a healthy environment to your kids to grow up in a healthy environment even you are separated at least the kids they don't take in their because we need to be really, really careful what we say in front of the kids, how we behave in front of the kids. They are like sponge. They absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. And then we grow, they grow up, it's all coming out. They behave differently. They can respond differently. They can act differently. And this is where it comes from, from an old, old experience. They've seen their parents, you know, arguing with each other, fighting each other, talking bad uh, about each other which we, we've done in uh, without being conscious about it. So please, even the couple being separated, the respect should be their first priority. And as well, keep the kids, uh, uh, you know, keep the relation between them and the kids a really uh, positive relationship and talk about the other half in a positive way, in a nice way, at least. Very, very good advice, Khadija. And, you know, unfortunately, we have come to the end of the show so quickly and I have so much more to discuss with you, but I want to give you that last minute to just, you know, how do people reach you? So inshallah, if they need more advice and guidance, they come directly to you. Please take it away. Yeah, sure. I would like first of all to say thank you for your invite to the show and to singlemuslim.com as well for this uh, amazing uh, program. Uh, for anyone who would love to reach out to me, you can reach out directly to my Instagram, Khadija Marif, or booking me for any speaking event is khadijamarif.com or whoever would like to read the experience and take a lot, a lot of inspiration and motivational ex uh, experience from my book, you can order it straight away from Amazon. Oh, thank you so much. An absolute pleasure to have you today, actually. It was really joyful, really, really inspiring. And inshallah, please go and get that book. Please, you know, follow her on Instagram, Khadija Marif. And inshallah, we will have another episode next week with a new guest and topic. Thank you so much for all your support, your questions and queries. We will be back next week. Place. Same time. Make sure you tune in. Have a wonderful evening and see you next week. Take care. Salaamu Alaikum.